Welcome to the Top 200 Podcast with your host, Herschel Ford. How's it going, everybody? What's up? This is Herschel Ford from High School Top 200, and this is the Monday Morning uh, Podcast. Uh, and um, it's good to be uh, back again. I didn't do one last week. It's been like the worst bloody month for ages now. And after getting sick, and then uh, the reason why I didn't do anything, uh, no podcast last week is because everything that I had from photos to video clips to, you know, even rosters from like 2013, that I had all the stuff that I accumulated uh, all saved on a hard drive, and the hard drive was just wipe just lost like everything on it was just lost i don't know what happened to it um everything on it just gone you know man i was so pissed off and it makes it worse that when you don't know how to fix something yourself it you know just makes it worse then and so um yeah i actually don't know how i'm gonna get any of it back like this stuff here and there um but it's putting it all together again is is the hardest thing and there's so much photos so much footage of uh you know stuff from the last eight nine years you know that's just gone and it wasn't even just that stuff too because like on a separate like i have i have two um hard drives and you know um all the stuff i wanted to keep 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 was the stuff that was erased and it was heaps of family stuff too um family photos and videos and clips and stuff like that too so i was, was pretty pissed off and annoyed and all that kind of stuff that you go through and you know it's just a lot of that stuff all accumulates and you know how when just nothing goes right that's kind of like what i'm in right now it's just like when nothing's going right so it sucks right now but you know and then obviously everyone's had a pretty crap weekend with the with the all blacks losing again um waikato won uh so that was kind of that was a positive i thought that was great um but yeah the all blacks losing too and i mean i i see a lot of complaints about it and i feel like um we do want to win all the time and i think we expect winning all the time because of 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 the team that we support and three losses you know it's kind of strange because three losses for the season doesn't really sound bad but it kind of is without 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 expectation that we have for what we feel like they should be doing but we we kind of look at the all blacks as the all blacks instead of looking at the individuals that we have and in terms of individuals i just don't think we have better individuals than other teams a few other teams i think um and even though we're losing to them now in a year or two i don't think we'll be losing to them uh, even next year i don't think we'll lose to them um because we've got a really young all black team um we we don't have a lot of um experienced players all over the field but like we kind of went through we kind of go through that anyway like a lot of our all blacks stick around for a long time and so like the fact that we have all these guys that are so young and they're so young to the point where these are guys that have been on top 200 as well so you know you know, with Quinn and Tupo and Dalton and, you know, Summer Sunne, like, um, Will Jordan, you know, Jordy Barrett, like, all these guys have been part of Top 200. So that's only, that's only, like, six years from when they were 17 to what they are now, and we're expecting them to be at a level in the in their early, early 20s. And remember, Josh Lord only is still under 20s. And we kind of want all these guys to be ready and prepared right now. 
But then, like, you kind of look at it, um, because I was thinking about it too, right, is that, like, we've, we've got a bunch of young guys, um, and we've played against guys that, um, that are from New Zealand, sort of like Bundy and, 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 and James Lowe, um, Parks, and then, like, even, like, the prop from, um, France, um, the Samoan fella, shoot, Antonio, because um, even he is from New Zealand too, he, he's from Wesley, he used to go to Wesley College, but guys like that, I kind of feel like um, we get rid of them maybe too early, or we don't offer them an opportunity to stay and even with that rule that like if you're going to play for the All Blacks you have to be playing in New Zealand at the time um, even that's kind of like a harsh rule that I think shows that maybe that rule is not that great maybe that rule should should be altered or should be changed or something because and even like our standard of of how we select our players, like in all honesty, if Bundy was still here in the Waikato uh, at the Chiefs, or even in, even in New Zealand, he probably won't get a roster spot in terms of a starter. But he'll go over there and play for, you know, the Irish and and the Lions. But in New Zealand, like he wouldn't even make he wouldn't even make a starting spot. And maybe that's because, um, and maybe that's us. Maybe that's our fault as 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 selectors and how we want to the game to be played. Is that we're always going for youth instead of holding on to maybe our experienced players. And it kind of looks like it right now is that all these teams from overseas that have experienced players from you know from not just us but even South Africa maybe that's benefiting all those teams up there and their players instead of benefiting all of our own players maybe that's turned around to flip and shoot us in the ass that the fact that we don't have Bundyaki playing here in New Zealand and playing against uh, playing against Quintupaya which he sh probably should be learning from or even James Love in that, just to keep that standard pretty high. But then all of our all of our uh, experienced players are all gone. Like like especially someone like um um what's his name? The other Whitelock brother as well that left uh, Luke Whitelock. You know he would probably still be here playing Super Rugby, and his experience would be growing. Um, to the point where it's still holding a standard that we should be playing at. And sometimes I feel that, that, that that's the reason why um, this is starting to turn around for the world, is that they're, ex they're gaining the experience of our older players to benefit their players and not really our players. Where our players may be young and dynamic and all that stuff, but experience is, is not taught through through youth. It's you know, it's why it's experience. It's the older guys that that do that. It's the older guys that are in the locker rooms and the older teammates that you have around you, telling you what you are doing right and what you are doing wrong. Not just on the field, but also off the field as well. And so I kind of feel like maybe this, this the rule that we do have is is really turned around on us. And um, even though um, these guys have that um, that desire, obviously, to go out and and make themselves a business and go and go and get the money. Um, Even after they've like played a game for the All Blacks and stuff like that, uh, it really isn't helping New Zealand rugby as a whole. Like we have the top rated players, the young players coming through, and that's great. But then there's those other guys in that second level, maybe a bit too far down on that second level, to the point where it goes back. You know, it goes back to the fact that that second level is full of young guys that you're not really going to learn much from. 
And then you kind of look at some of these guys who are All Blacks or becoming All Blacks now. It's just like, well, how many of these guys are going to stay around? Because, I, I mean, I've said this before. It's just like, if Tupo or Samasone or, you know, even Asufa or more, like, if these guys really wanted to get some money now, they would easily get a bunch of money right now from somewhere somewhere in France, somewhere in Japan or in England and that. And, and they're still, like, in their 23s and 24s. Like, our sofa or more could make so much money somewhere else right now after he's already had his All Black stuff. You know, he's already got his caps under him. You know, Ethan Ethan as well, if he'd really just like, cool, now I just want to be a business. I just want to make money. I just want to play rugby and make money. You know, set myself up after this. He could easily just go overseas and be like, yep, yeah, cool. I already got my cap. I'm going to go make some money. You know, and, and like, I think that's kind of where... Um, Maybe the rule of playing in New Zealand just to be an All Black maybe shouldn't be, uh, maybe should be changed. It should be changed. Maybe they should select guys from overseas that can still offer a lot. I mean, like, even when when you had someone like, um, uh, what's his name that used to play? Victor Vito was, another, was, was one of the guys that I thought of a lot was just like, man, he just left too early. But it's an understandable left too early too, because like who wants to who wants to stay here and play rugby at a higher level, earning less money than the other guys that are overseas, knowing that, that they're getting way more money than what you are. But you offer a lot more. And and like I think we thought of Victor Vito as one of those guys that was like, oh, his career is coming to an end, when it really wasn't. It really wasn't. His All Black career was coming to an end because of the standard that we put on it. But he's he went over to France and I even think he became player of the year once or twice while he was over there. And then like, and then it's funny because you, know, you see guys like Chris Marsoy who had left, left New Zealand ages ago and still playing almost close to 40. I mean, they show Joe Rokotoko as well, like, and he's like another one that played and his, his longevity of his game went on a lot longer. But in New Zealand, he wouldn't even be able to get a spot. He wouldn't even be able to get a roster in New Zealand. And that's not to say that he's not good, but that's to say, like, maybe our selection process is wrong in that. Maybe the way that we're doing it is wrong. Maybe we're not appreciating the 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 experience that a lot of these guys hold and how much can benefit our younger guys coming through to hold them and keep them strong with what they're doing. I mean, like Charles von Wiener was another one that left as well. John of Four left a lot too. And they were still playing five or six years after they left. I mean, we could have had them five or six years still here um, benefiting our younger guys. And maybe we are getting too young. Like the NFL is getting too young. The NBA is getting too young. NBA is getting so young that European leagues and even the NBL is catching up to what the NBA is. They're not going to be the NBA because you've always got the main superstars there. But in terms of the bench, there's a bunch of these guys from Australia and Greece and Spain and Italy and that. They could all start and they could be 6th, 7th man or 8th man on an NBA roster because those young guys on the bench are not as good as those old experienced guys. More athletic. Jacking up threes all over the place, you know, with the, hitting these low percentages. Just because you got a green light for what the game is played. But I feel like, at the same time, is that like, the NBA is missing a lot of experience. The NFL is missing a lot of experience. Because they're going for these younger guys. But at the same time, are not building the same or offering the same as what some of these older guys can. And when it comes to not just time on the field but even experience at, at at like training and in the weight room and just in film sessions and things like that and just one-on-one -on -one technique like um you know training things like that is where your older guys become this massive asset that your head coach has this lot of support on maybe that's what we're failing right now maybe we're failing that right now because we don't have those older guys to help out the coaches that we do and the thing is, is that I, I kind of start seeing that, um, well, I haven't started seeing this. It's kind of been around for a few years now already, but a lot of our good coaches are going. 
a lot of our good coaches are going and are making all these other teams and other countries way better because we have no spots but even the rotation in terms of all these positions maybe are not the best maybe it's not the best way to do it I mean we have so many good coaches here and the, and the and the benefit and positive that I have um, with what I'm doing with high school top 200 is that I see how much great coaches that we have just here in first 15 rugby they could obviously benefit all of these other NPC provinces as well they've just chosen to stay at these schools when they could have easily gone out and, and ventured out my thing is that like and I've, I've always said this about USA rugby because my wife's American and you know I always like to tease you about how useless they are but the Americans problem is not is not their players America's America's problem is their coaches if I was if I was American rugby I would come here and find all the best all the best coaches in, in all the provinces and then just take them all to America. I'll take like 20 coaches to America to coach American to coaches at the same time as, um, you know, coach teams and coach players and and just do it that way and then bring them up through the American system and then just make it, make it their own and just keep them on the payroll and keep them happy uh, money-wise so that their players can get better and their teams can get better. Because they have all the players in the world. Like even like people look at these guys and go, "Oh well, you know, if if you had someone like um, um, what's his name, like if you had all these American football players, like sort of someone like Aaron Donald, if you go, oh well, if you put him in there and he played rugby, you know, he would rip up. It's like, well, you don't really need him because he's not like he's not like." The only athlete some football players can't play rugby actually and i would argue the fact that most football players wouldn't be able to play rugby i would argue that 100 percent, especially when you're in the nfl because you're already stuck on what you do but those guys that played college football that didn't make that obviously weren't going to make it to the league because only a small percentage make it i would go after those college football players guys that have really good college football careers and they only finish at they only finish at around 21 22 when they finish their college careers and then just they can't do anything else after that because there's no football there's no, no organized rugby uh, no organized american football after that i would just go and get them and go hey your college career was great you know you did great in your college career um we want you to play uh rugby and it's a second five we'll just let, teach you how to catch the ball rugby way not just tuck it and hold it teach you how to hold it out front pass the ball like simple things like that you can teach those kind of guys you can't really teach nfl players that kind of stuff because in a lot of the time it would take them out of what their natural thing is it would do the same thing with college players but college players um forget about football after that they don't have to do it nfl players still play you know in the nfl so to me it's just like get the coaches over there and and do the same thing with american rugby but like I was saying, there's with our All Blacks, I feel like we're at a young stage. We feel like I feel like we're at a, a process where we're starting to get all the younger guys in, and a lot of these younger guys will start playing 50 to 60, 70 to 100 tests uh, for a few of them, and um, sort of start phasing out the older guys like Coles and Whitelock and Aaron Smith and that, and try and get these guys in there. And it's just a natural progression because we. We used to praise Richie McCoy and Mills Molina and, you know, Kevin Malama and guys like that. Tony Woodcock and all those guys. And at some point they had to be phased out and bring in the newer guys. That's how we got our guys right now. But at the same time, is that like, I feel like maybe our process is wrong in the way in which we do it in terms of getting these boys ready for that. You know, so like maybe that there's, there's something to talk about there and the way it's done. Because obviously with all the guys that we... Um, have had over the years that have left early that were still in their 26s 27s and they've all gone overseas we don't have that now if you look at all the uh, all the 
the ages of our rosters on the NPC, um, the average age has dropped so much right now. It's dropped so much. And I, and I, for one, obviously recognize it because those are all the boys that come from top 200 into the NPC. And a lot of boys take those spots. And so I'm thinking, well, they were only on my list three years ago. And now they're starting NPC. You know, so there's something to it. But I think there's just the balance to it. And maybe the balance that we have right now is not working out. Or maybe the balance that we have, we've got a bit confused of how benefited, uh, how much of a benefit it actually is to uh, our rugby brand and building our, our, our rugby players. And I know that three sounds like a lot, but I guess when you're an All Black fan, and like I'm the same as pretty much everyone else, we expect to win every single game. But maybe it's the coach, just like everybody's saying. I mean, like, if, if you're a Chiefs fan, like, Fuzzy wasn't the greatest guy that we had here in, in the Chiefs region in terms of um, how we saw wins and losses and how our, how the team went for the year while he was our head coach. I mean, that's not really a secret to anybody here that lives in the Chiefs region. If you, if you talk to most Chiefs fans, they'll be like, ah, I don't know. That's when, when it came to him being called the All Black uh, coach. Um, most of us went back to like our Chiefs days memories and going, well, it didn't work out for us. I don't know how it's going to work out for the country. And if you just took this year on it, you're just like, oh, maybe it didn't work out for the country. It's not working out for the country either. You know, so like we have those kind of like um, memories and those kind of, uh, I don't know, like worries about it. And I don't think that you can kind of deny, you know, um, Razor either as, as, a, as a head coach or a leading head coach candidate. Um, but I guess, you know, uh, I mean, maybe New Zealand rugby don't mind the three losses. The public does. I do. Like, I do. Like, uh, I do. I, I don't like that we lost three times. I actually don't even like that we lost once. But maybe the New Zealand rugby don't mind the three losses. Um, but I know the public does, especially when you just read on, you know, all the, all the comments and stuff like that. And just like everyone's, you know, everyone's going after, uh, after Foster. So maybe there's no, I can't actually say that, that maybe there's something to it because publics are just public. They don't really know sort of the industry and how it works inside. So maybe there's something to it. I don't know. Um, I think I'll watch over the next year's uh, Super Rugby and then um, see what happens. Uh, see how all the players look. And I think, and, I, and I'm ha actually happy because, you know, I watched the women's game as well. We did a bit better, but we're still behind. And we're still behind, and I don't think that... Um, I kind of have this feeling that um, coaching staff for the New Zealand women's team knew that they were going to lose. I think they knew that it was going to be hard. And I think they knew that they weren't going to come away with very much wins. But I think they wanted to take them out there and they needed to take them out there to get all these all these players um, familiar with what international rugby is and what touring is like and how hard it's actually going to be to, to um, get that next World Cup that our, our women want to win. And, and the reason why I say that is because when our rugby stopped, Six Nations women's rugby was still going on and they were still strong and they were still at that level of this is what we need to play at. And our girls were struggling to uh, finish the MP, uh, the Farrah Palmer Cup. Uh, you know, that level is a, is a bit lower, is a lot lower actually. It's not a bit, it's a lot lower than what their Six Nations one is. And we hadn't had the Super Rugby con uh, 
concept put together yet and i'm so happy that we have it now because then now we can get um all these women uh, up to that standard that we that we need to be at and i feel like we need to be at it because we do have the players we do have the talent and they just need to be more familiar with the competition and how it works and then how to adjust when it comes to coming into these super teams and then having going i, I love the what i loved watching it too um uh, when they put those just those exp exhibition games together just to see what the concept is like but at the same time i feel like we need australia too to also do their their rugby teams and they need to go across um and play there and and australia needs to come across here too and the other thing as well is because south africa women they struggled too you know they struggled to play up there as well um and i feel like australia is probably lucky they didn't send the women's team up there or unless they did no i don't think they did because they would have felt the same thing but i know that they'll be watching and going well if new zealand got smoked like that as i imagine what we would have been like if we went over too they would have had the same treatment that we got but I, i'm so happy that they have the the competition now uh, and then the women's super rugby is now up um and and all the teams and rosters are put together and they get to have uh you know the training together and and the funding is there and the money is there um and i can't wait to buy my daughter a, a jersey as well um you know just to support our, our our waikato team and um yeah i can't wait for it to to start up because I, i'm obviously i'm going to be taking my daughters or maybe my daughter my other daughter won't care but one of my daughters will um and so i'll be taking her um, maybe go catch some games as well. Hopefully go to all the games that we play here in Waikato. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, hard weekend. Hard month for me, but hard weekend for, for rugby and for sports. Um, but at least my jazz are still doing good and my charges are going great. Um, right now I'm doing for uh, Top 200. Right now I'm going into um, doing uh, team reviews for, of the Top 50 teams. Um, and then I'll be putting out some um, articles. At the t I'm going to be finishing my um, my top four nationals, uh, you know, uh, tournaments as well. Um, obviously, with everything that went on, I had to uh, had to take a break. Couldn't even write anything. My mind was so flipping all over the place. And then losing all the rosters and losing all the information was even worse. And so a lot of the stuff I'm just gaining, trying to get back and gather everything back. Then I'll be able to get back onto that as well as all the season reviews for the top 50 teams. Then I'll be writing about guys to have a look out for next year. Guys from um, year 11s going into year 12s, year 12s going into year 13s, who all the best players are. And then also writing about some year 10s that I, um, that I see coming through that I feel like uh, will be in that top, 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 I guess, uh, uh, rankings for the top 60 year 11s um, coming next year uh, there's there's been a lot I, I guess because now that I'm doing these you know the reviews on the top 50 teams and you kind of see um, uh, I mean like I, I kind of saw a lot of stuff that I didn't see throughout the year um, And, you know, like when I was talking about Howick and how good they actually were, I really wish that I had pushed the Howick team um, a lot more throughout this year and how good that they actually were. And I feel like that, um, and I feel like, and I think, and I think that if I push a lot of these teams that I know that are going to be good the next year, they can get good um preseason games against higher ranked teams that i think that they will benefit from from playing in the preseason you know and i think howick would have been one of those teams um howick would have been one of those teams where i think if i'd pushed them push their name out there schools would have rung me to say Get me in contact with Howick. 
and, and we want to we want to challenge them for preseason games because the other thing is that bigger schools in terms of preseason bigger schools will play their their normal teams that they play like Rotorua always play Auckland Grammar for preseason Sacred Heart always play Tauranga for preseason um uh, St. Kent's will always play Hastings and Kelston boys will always play Hastings. Hamilton boys don't really do a lot of preseason teams, uh, preseason games. They picked up this one against Mags and Westlake that they do play, uh, you know, sometimes. Um, uh, but they don't always want to play bigger teams. They always want to play smaller schools. Like Pukekohe was the other one that I think that I should have pushed a lot more because I knew that they had the players, but I didn't really know... I didn't really look at how much they had they would get better over the the summer and how they would put that team together the way that they did and i misjudged that a lot in terms of like how good they were actually going to be and i knew that they were going to be um pretty solid because i knew a lot of those boys were coming back same thing with howard because that i knew those some of those boys were coming back but i didn't realize how good they got, those guys got over the summer and my misjudgment of that was totally off in terms of that um, how those two teams are going to be. Matter Battle was kind of the same, but I feel like those three teams, um, all being the all being the three teams that did not lose a game was Matter Matter, Howick, and um, Pukekohe, and then obviously the main team, Kelston Boys, our number one team in the country. Those were the four teams that never lost a game all season. Um, those three teams probably should have played each other at some point this year as well. Was Howick. Matter Matter and Pukekohe. Pukekohe and Howick played in the preseason, which Pukekohe won. Um, but in terms of like, you know, my rankings and stuff, that didn't count. It was a three way, it was a, uh, what is it, a, a three, um, three team game where they, you know, swapped off at like, you know, 20 minutes each, that kind of stuff. Um, but um, I wish there was a real game between Matter Matter and Pukekohe and also with Howick and those three teams played off. But I wish that I was able to see that more. And this is kind of like, this is on my part more to do a lot more homework than I'm actually doing and going, okay, how can I tell everyone else that these guys are going to be a, a, you know, a team this year and that maybe some big teams will want to play them for preseason so that this, this smaller team can actually pick themselves up and go, oh, that's the level that we want to reach. That's what we want to be playing at is at is at that level right there. Like Cambridge High School has been like that a few times as well, where I've uh, I haven't looked at how good they're actually going to be. Mana College was one um, also this year that I feel like from last year they should have carried on to this year, and it was just a bit up and down in the way that it went. Um, Mount Aspiring was another one that I I kind of um, misinterpreted, but they were going to have a lot of players back from from this year too because I think they have something like. Um, eight year 12s I think it is in their team right now with two year 11s another one is um, is Waitaki boys who have nine year 12s and three year 11s in the team right now and then there's um, uh, a good group of Kings High School team uh, players that will be back as well um, that will also be another one of those teams that you would look for um, St. Bernard's is another team that you probably look out for. And this is just off the top of my head right now. I mean, I still have got all my information back, but I'm working so hard to get all the information back. This is off the top of my head. So I know St. Bernard's is going to be one of those teams as well that you should probably watch out for where they do have a lot more young players coming back. Um, uh, I think it's, they've got, I think they've got 10 returning altogether, three year 12s, seven uh, uh seven year 12s three year 11s um and that will be a 10 that's solid on coming back and these are kind of like the smaller teams that i'm talking about um and so those teams i think that if uh, if those guys if they were the teams that sort of wanted to get better um and play some really uh big schools in the preseason, and if some of your big schools want to look out to some of these teams as well and go uh, yeah, we'll be keen to have a go because at least they, like big teams are like, we want to play a game that we'll win, obviously that we can try our stuff and we'll win and get our confidence up, but we still want to be pushed as well because a lot of these big teams are not going to be playing their best players, they're going to be playing their guys who are 
fighting for spots and who are also guys that are on the bench or their young year 11 players or their or their year 11 players or their year 12 players that not quite sure of. so that's the kind of uh, uh, pressure that they want from some of these smaller teams but uh, that's also the same way that these smaller teams can get respect and i've done this before when we used to play when i used to play first 15 at high school as well we used to play teams that we didn't really know about and we're going oh shoot this is actually a uh, a solid team we would win by like you know 30 35 points or something like that but we'd be like oh shoot they were actually pretty solid i mean we did the same thing Carson boys when Carson boys was going on their run and we flipped them game of a, a go before um obviously they turned on the switch and then beat us like uh, by like 15 points or something like that in the end but there was like a massive period where we were just flipping having a go at them same thing with wesley college every single year when wesley was at the top of the game where we always gave them problems, like we always gave them problems, and always, you know, made them fight for that, for that, uh, for that win. Um, and so, like, there's some smaller schools out there that um, big schools should have a look at, and, and really, uh, and and hit them up and see if they want a preseason game because, like, it's not, it's going to benefit the both of you. That's kind of how I see it. It's going to benefit the both of you. Um, I was kind of looking at like the competitions as well because I'm going through all the rosters or finding all the rosters going through and then sorting out sorting out the teams of like who's who's got guys coming back that who's got year 12s and year 11s and their team coming back and this is kind of how i figure out the rosters and the rankings and stuff too and that kind of figure out where um what um what sections of the team and auxiliaries are going to be good where you know if you got if you got two starters in the front row coming back and you got a guy who's on the bench who's also coming back as well and you know that you can field uh, an experienced front row. To me, I look at that and I go, okay, well, obviously they're going to have a lot of experience. Obviously they're going to have guys that um, are really good. They made some, you know, two of those guys made rep teams. Um, you know, that young guy is also really good too. And then I look at it that way and go, okay, but then the, this is the competition they play in. They're pretty high up in there. And this is where I think they can do on a national scale and against the other best teams that are coming back to have good ones. Also, I look at guys that are coming from second 15 or under 15 and going, okay, they can fill these voids for some of these teams. And the best thing about year 11s is this is something that I find out every year is that some of these year, year 11s just come in and then they automatically start for their first 15 because they just had this growth or something, something just clicked in them that they were like, oh, this is what the game is about. And it's finally all caught up with them. And then they end up being this massive massive asset to their team and and it's always cool seeing stuff like that when 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 you see them as young as uh, you see them as year 11s and then after that you see them as these as these guys in the first 15 who are leading from the front it's the same thing with locking situation and also your loose trio as well is that like i look at it and go well you know you've got an open side who's coming back um, and then you've got two boys on the bench who, you know, one was playing number eight and then you've got a guy who was playing Lock Lucy and they didn't really know what he was. And then you go, well, I think that they'll put him in, in a, a Lucy position. And I look at those three and then I go, OK, this is kind of how I sum it up. Looking at the four pack as a whole and then going, well, in a four pack of eight, you know, they've got four coming back who are really good, who started and then maybe one coming off the bench. And you're like, OK. In the whole scheme of things, this is kind of where I think that they'll end up. And then putting that up against other people as well and, and other teams. Like, obviously, St. Kent's, who have had a bunch of guys, most of the team was year 11 and year 12. They only had three year 13s in the starting last year, I think it was. Three, four, four year 13s. And so 11 of those starters are coming back. Everyone on the bench was coming back too. So obviously St. Kent's is going to be one of those teams that are just like, oh, I don't know how this is going to go. And the weird thing with uh, uh, St. Kent's too is that they had a massive, massive start to the season. Like they took out Scott's College who barely lost a game last year of this year. And they beat them. And then they, from then on, it pretty much was just a downfall. And, and I always put it down to the fact that they played Saint, uh, they played Calston on TV and the young boys didn't know how to react to that. And obviously, because social media is what social media is, I think that they, they, they weren't sure on how to take that loss. And most of you guys out there, a loss is a loss. Get rid of it and then play the next week and forget about what's going on. It's fine. You know, like you guys just got to have a, a bit more thick skin and just a bit more switch off 
and feel that pain of a, of a loss and then once you've finished it make sure it's finished and then carry on to the next one and that's kind of what St. Kent's was to me is it's just like they felt that loss and then they just didn't get over it they didn't get over of, uh, over that loss and that's just one of those things that you have to sort of um, you know go through and that you have to kind of learn I'm glad that St. Kent's learned it as a you know learn that lesson as as young players and not older players i think mags is probably another one mags is another one too they have a had a had a really um half and half team of you know experienced players and guys that were new a bunch of year 12s and year 11s that were learning and i think next year is going to be uh, one of those years where uh you know mags is really going to um make a dent in that in that um in that 1a sacred hearts the same i like what sacred hearts going to have coming back next year um d la salle is probably the, the other one um d la salle should make the top four um in auckland in the 1a they should um they've got too many good players not to uh they got to figure their, they got to figure themselves out and then they've got to they've got to be able to get there and and you know, and and make that um, make that step up into top four. Uh, the Lasalle always have a team, and for some reason they just don't pull it off that way. Uh, I'm not too sure what it is. It's just kind of how it is with De La Salle. But next year they should be a top four team in in that um in that in that one A. Um, Hamilton boys should be good again uh, with the amount of players that they have coming back they have the amount of players but then the superstar um, the superstar players just come from Peyton um, Spencer but then at the same time it's just like um, I feel like Peyton's probably still going to be playing cricket and that's probably his other battle that he's going to have is just like whether he wants to take that cricket route or the rugby route in the end and, and which one he cares about a lot more and and like in all honesty like even if he went cricket I'd be like yeah that's cool happy you know, as long as he's happy that's fine you know, I'm not one of these guys like, oh, you should stick with rugby. That's how many sports. Like, ah, I don't know. Maybe he wants to play IPL. Maybe he wants to get, you know, a million dollars to work for, what is it, three months? And then travel to the Caribbean and play there for another bunch of, you know, just that kind of stuff. I don't know. But Hamilton boys will be one. Um, Napier boys will be another. Um, Napier boys have, have a lot of... Big time talent, obviously with Gus Brown and, and Max uh, Ratcliffe. Um, Taikiaki's another one um, uh, are there too. Um, I think I think New Plymouth Boys is going to be one of those teams that's a team. I don't think they're going to have like these big superstar talents, but I think they're going to be good as a team and 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 win things as a team. Um, Rotorua Boys have have good young talent coming back. Uh, they had this good balance between um, the the young players and the and the older players, and obviously they're going to lose some older players, but they have young boys um, in that team already that can step up and they can also show um, that they can still stay at the top of that of that Super Eight with you know with Hamilton boys and that. Um, Palmy should be okay. Um, I know that they lose a few players. But I know the under 15s and their and their second 15s have been pretty good, and they are guys that are in those teams that will fill in really well um, into those teams. Um, yeah, yeah, I think those would be. And then Hastings, of of course, is Hastings going to have um, a good solid team, and I think they're going to be more solid team than they are going to be superstars um, in that team. Um, even in terms of like uh, um, guys that would stand out, I think the team stands out more before the players actually stand out. Um, I think if A1 comes back, he's probably going to be their best player. Um, and if he comes back, I think he'll be one of the country's best players as well in terms of... Uh, and I think with him will be more about position-wise, really, because you don't know if A1 is, is a prop or if he's a hooker. And, and which one he's going to do better at at the next level. I would say he would do better at the next level if he was playing hooker. That's to me. I think he'll be better in the next level playing hooker. Um, but yeah, even like even like down the road, like uh, Lindisfarne 
is is gonna be okay. They still have some they still have some talent there coming through Lindisfarne. St. John's is gonna be another one as well where um they have a good roster of younger guys that play this year who will be coming back and be able to I guess balance out a bit. They might struggle a little bit um first off in the season. Maybe they need some really good preseason games to to really get those jitters out and get the team together and working. St. John's and Hamilton is going to be a big problem for people. I think if you really want a big, big preseason game to get ready, St. John's is probably the one that you really want to play from Hamilton. Um, if you're a big team and you want really big, hard competition, um, St. John's, Hamilton is probably the team you want to play. St. Peter's is probably another one from Cambridge um, that you might want to look into as well. That will have a lot of good players that are young. The back line is going to be on fire again um also saint paul's collegiate might be one that you'd want to look at too in terms of finding guys that you know are finding teams that that, that are going to push uh, fielding is probably the same especially with Vern down there uh Vern basin and so uh Vern basin so like he's probably going to be one of the best hookers coming around next year as well um Obviously, Silver Stream will be another. Uh, I kind of worry a bit about St. Pat's Town. Uh, Scott should be on fire again because they had a bunch of young guys in that team. Uh, Wellington College will have a good 9 and 10 with Devin and Stanley. Both of those two guys, uh, I, I look for big things from those two. Um, so they should be pretty fine. Nelson is probably going to restock again. Um, they got some good players, though. they got some good young players that I've seen. Uh, um so yeah, it's those are all the kind of things that I'm looking at now and how, um, you know, sort of the, and now it's just like a brief rundown on teams that I have on the top of my head. But um, as I'm as I write my reviews for the top fifty, I will talk a little bit about what they've got coming through next year because obviously I have a little segment at the bottom which is you know my, I guess what my indication for them and and what I see for them coming up next year. Um, but yeah, um, hopefully that um, I get everything back, all my information back again, and then I'll be able to give you like more of a uh, in depth rundown on how it's going to be. I'm still going to, um, uh, I'm still going to do the rankings for next year, um, for year twelve, or for the the top six, uh, top hundred year twelves, and also for the top two hundred, and then and then the top hundred teams. Um, and then um, figure out in the new year whether I'm going to continue on from that or not. And then, um, yeah, see what happens there. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still wondering whether I should do this or not. Yeah. And then seeing how it goes. But I don't know. I don't know yet. Might just get a normal job. <laughs> Something like that. And I don't know what I'm going to do with all my information that I have and all the stuff that I've accumulated with, uh, you know, and, and getting all my information back. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's all there. Um, I hit up Moana Pacifica and still haven't got, heard anything back from those guys. So I don't know. You know, see what happens. Um, but that's uh, that's just a short uh, podcast for today on a Monday morning meeting. This is Herschel Fruin from High School Top 200. Peace.